This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association of MTK Global at the beautiful residence of John Fury. I made it through the Badlands. <laughs> Thanks for having me firstly, John. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming, Omar. Been a long time, mate. First interview, me and you, isn't it? I'm yeah, sure we've it done is. a couple of quick ones. A couple of quick ones, haven't we? But uh, yes. first in-depth one. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Coogan's just come back from Vegas. Yeah. Titans just landed today. Absolutely. Good reception at Manchester Airport today. I've never seen as many people. You know, it made me pleased and it warmed me out to see the appreciation of people turning up and uh, realising that their champion has returned home with the richest prize in sport. You know, and they, uh, they showed a good uh, reception to him. There was TV there. There was a thousand people at the airport. It was great, great atmosphere and I enjoyed every moment of it. I seen Tyson, didn't hang around with him. I said I was proud of him, wished him luck and he went back home to his kids. Something that hit me today was uh, a Mancunian who said that we was here when he arrived from Dusseldorf and there was about five people there. Mm. Obviously we saw the reception that he got today and thoroughly deserved. Why do you think he didn't get that accolade after beating Klitschko, which arguably is the best result by a British fighter ever? Like I said before to other people, I think people was more in shock, just like Tyson was. And it took a while for it to sink in, did it just beat an 11 year reigning champion? But uh, um, you know what? These things had to happen to make Tyson such a great year today. You know, and all those things all set the precedent of what took place today. The greatest heavyweight from the UK ever. And it'll be another thousand years before another one comes like my son Tyson. You know, he's done everything, he's won everything. You know, and the, and the nation now are proud and appreciate what he's done for the country and his people, you know. And I can only commend people for that. And I've, I've warmed to people because I know now everybody has a soft spot for Tyson because of what he is, what he's been through, how many people he's helped along the way. It's not just about boxing here, it's about a lot of other things. You know, and, and people come up to me what's never seen boxing, what don't do boxing from a totally different world. And they say, you know what, we love your son. And I can see the passion in their eyes. And you know what? I'm as tough as an old pit boot, but I'll tell you what it is. It brings tears to my eyes, some of the people I've met, and they've changed my life as well. And they've made me more humble and a better person in every aspect. And I appreciate and love them all. You know, obviously you're going to get the odd person what uh, would disagree with anything, what you could never please, but they're just a minority. But you know what? The biggest percentage of people, I've grown to love them, and I do dearly. You can't please everyone, but I think you're right there. 99% of the people in this country, and we'll talk about globally as well, but yeah. in this country are in love with Tyson, because you're right, because he's transcended a sport where it's crossed over to a place where it's bigger than boxing, the amount mm -hmm. of lives he saved. Um, and just getting off the canvas on that first Wilder fight, that clip that did so many rounds, I'm sure has inspired many people when they're struggling in life to get up and keep going, and that says a lot about Tyson. That's why what happened happened, because I believe in divine intervention, I believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, without him nothing's possible. And I believe that every so often in this world, and don't forget, a blink of an eye is nothing but a, th a thousand years is a blink of an eye in God's kingdom. And I believe he's picked Tyson in this time to wrong a lot of rights, you know, and that's what Tyson does. And when he was down in the 12th round in the Wilder fight, you know, whatever got him to his feet and carried on to win the round, had to be. He was carved in stone long before the wild fight even come along. And it set a precedent for today and he's helping people daily. And that's what it's all about. You know, God is a most powerful being. You know, and let me tell you something. A lot of people think I'm raving mad. They think, oh yeah, he's a Bible basher. He's this, that and the other. But I've had godly experiences, me. I've had them happen to me. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? That's not possible. I should not be alive. I should not be here, but I am here. That's how I know these things. And I say to people, there's more to the eye than what the eye can see. Let me tell you, and a lot of people disbelieve you, say you're raving mad, but it's proved itself time and time again. Even with this Wilder fight, I knew Wilder could not beat Tyson. Not whatever he did. If he trained for the next 10 years and he had the best team in the world and he had a load of, uh, let's put it this way, artificial intelligence training him, he still wouldn't have beat Tyson because it's set in stone. This man is meant to be and do what he's doing. And he's helping so much people. And when he's finished boxing, 
that's when the real work starts, when he's finished all this, when the platform's set, it's all done, let's open a new chapter and let's save a lot of lives. And let me tell you something, I'm only a father, I'm nobody me. I'm just like every other dad, I'm still what I do what I do, my life's not changed one bit. But you know if I can help in any way, shape or form in saving someone's life, I'm all for it. And that makes me a good person. Forget me past, forget what I've done, I paid the ultimate price for that. I'll probably never see me some box live ever again. I've paid me debt to society. I've done everything possible. Regrets are there. I deep regret everything I've done in my life. But I'll tell you something. What I don't regret is trying to march forward and put the horrible negative past I had behind me and look for a better future. And that future is helping other people. You know, if they say, you know what, look at the life John Fury's had. It's not been good, it's been all uphill. But look, he's trying to help others, weaker people than him, people in more need than him. That's my goal. I ain't interested in no money. I'm not interested in nothing like that. That don't bother me at all. If I had five pound or five million, I'd still be John Fury. Still dressed like this, in a tracksuit, whatever I go. I try to make myself respectable and go everywhere else to fit the moment, but the man never changes. And that minds me. And I aim to help and be an ally to good whenever I can. I just want to touch upon something quickly you said there. Um, why do you think society rejects people who follow God in, in today's society, in today's modern world? Why do you think that happens, John? Because people don't understand it and they're afraid of it. And as time goes on, the word of God is being put to the back of the queue. And all this was stated in the Bible. God said this would happen. In time, he said, those people will mock me, they'll deny me, they'll do everything. You know, it's like all these diseases now, all this rain, all these fires, all this unrest, all this anger, all this evil. God said all this would happen in his book, you know. And you know what Bible stands for? Basic instructions before leaving earth. It's all there in in large print, small print, whatever you want to do, you can read it. You know, it's in many different languages, but it's still the Bible. It all means the same. But do they want it? Do they want to read it? The answer is no, because they're being brainwashed. They're being pulled from one direction to the other direction, saying to one another, well, what's right then? And the devil's main asset is to confuse people. And he, he's doing a bloody good job of confusing people. But he will not confuse me. He won't confuse my sons. He won't confuse my family. Because we're God-fearing people. And I say to this to people, ask, you will receive. Knock on the door will open. But if you knock the wrong door, the only thing's opening is evil in your life. Despair, negativity, unhappiness, illness, death at the end of it. And for every sin, the ultimate price to pay is death. It's there. But it's up to people what they do. You know, and with me, people might think, yeah, you've got a criminal record, you bash people up in your life, don't deny that. But those people I bashed up in my life, they deserve bashing up because they tried to bash me up. But I can tell you this much, I have never, ever picked on a human being but couldn't defend himself. If he wasn't my equal, and I didn't think he was my equal, I take no notice of him. He can insult me up hill and down. I say, you know what, lad? Have a day off. I smile and walk away. I only retaliated when I thought I was meeting an equal or I was threatened or my family was threatened. And if that makes me a bad person, well, I'll continue to be, I'll continue to be a bad person. But let me tell you something now. People, it's all down to common sense. You know, a lot of people haven't got any because it's not taught in schools. Common sense is not taught in schools. They're brainwashed robots. That's all they ever are. They're programmed to do one thing. What they want to do. They think, okay, we need somebody good at maths. Stick him in that corner, train him to do nothing but maths. Oh, we need somebody to do some kind of code reading job. Stick him in the corner, give him a code reading job. But what do they do when they finish the job? The robots, they can't go down any, any other avenue. They can't socialise with any different people. They can only socialise with the same people who've been trained in the same field. 
and that makes them robots. And that's what society tends to do today. But God don't teach that. God gave everybody a free will. And he expects everybody to think for themselves. But in this day and age, you're not allowed to think for yourself. You've got to watch what you say, watch what you do, watch where you go. And that, if that's not being in a hope and prison, I don't know what is. Do you think we'll go back to a society led by scripture? No. No. Because we're moving on. The world is becoming more advanced. It's all down to electronics, computers, artificial intelligence. And man now, they've realised now that a man don't need a brain. You see, like me, if I'm going to London, I don't have a satellite navigation, I don't have an iPhone, I don't have Instagram, I don't have nothing. If I get lost, I put the window down. Excuse me, mate, are you local? Can you tell me where such and such a place is? I've tried that now. People can't tell you. What do they do? They're out with their iPhone. Google mapping. Well, I'm thinking I could do that, but I won't do that. Because I want to use my own intelligence and it keeps me brain sharp to try and find the way without that phone. But everybody's in a hundred mile an hour rush, you see. So they haven't got time to think like me. I'm not going to use my phone. I'm going to ask a few people. I'm going to use my own initiative, my own brain. I'm going to find it without the phone. Because that's what I do. It keeps my brain sharp. But people today, through quickness, under mile an hour, speed, bam, 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 bam. Oh, it's there. Done. You arrive at your destination in such and such a time. Yes, Anson. Get back to bed, you robot. <laughs> to be fair, I've heard Tyson go on record and say that he switches his phone off for a few days. And, and well it he really should. helps him. Yeah. Well, he should. Well, he should. Because phones are taking over the world. They've got everything everything known about the individual on that phone. Mm. If somebody loses a phone and you get people who can act phones and there's people that can do it, they've got the life story on a telephone. I say to people, keep your own secrets within your own head. You've got the best computer in the world, God give it to you, your brain. Start using it. Start using it. Rely on your own self what God give you instead of a bloody phone, a piece of glass or some robot saying yes. How can I help you? You can't help me today because I've got my own brain. I wouldn't even switch the thing on. I'd feel humiliated and down thinking, hang on. I tell you what, John, you're slipping. You've got to use a phone to find your way around life. That ain't happening for this kid, mate. Keep the phones. Keep the smart TVs. Keep the smart motorways. Keep your train stations. I'll still do what I do. Rely on this. Well, it's never let me down in 54 years of living. And it's not going to let me down until my life ends. Back to Saturday night. Uh, your son creates so much history, I don't know where to start. Hey. <laughs> start with, uh, I suppose, the Ring Magazine title. Uh, he's joined some very elite company. Only two heavyweights before have won the Ring Magazine twice. And that other heavyweight is Muhammad Ali. Uh, it's not bad company, is it, John? Absolutely not. We was only discussing earlier about Muhammad Ali. For my money, he had it all. Brains, ability, you name it, Muhammad Ali had it. And I say to Tyson, his young lad, forget about everybody else. In the 60s, when things was bad for black people in America, he shone like a bright diamond all the time. And then of all them people he had around him, it was his own brain what carried him through. Because at the time, it was like a black oppression job. And he had one white man on his team called Angelo Dundee, a Jewish man. And when he was advised by everybody else around him, get rid of him, get rid of him, get rid of him, he kept Angelo Dundee. Because he knew Angelo Dundee was a key to his success. And he knew that Angelo Dundee wouldn't be where he was at today. Or then, Muhammad Ali. But you know what, I learned a lot from him growing up. You know, and I love my old idol, Mike Tyson. I've got a soft spot in my heart for Mike Tyson. I'll tell you why, because he's the same age as me. He's a, he's a year younger than me, is Mike Tyson. But I studied him from 1984, when I first seen him on the back page of a newspaper. And they said, we've got a young kid 18, 19, a wrecking machine. And he's, he's doing this and he's doing that to every, everybody's ears. And when I seen him fight, I thought, yep, 
he's going to be a world champion. He had everything, but what he didn't have, Mike Tyson, was guidance. Mm. And he never had a proper father, he never had a proper mother, and I felt sorry for him because I had a proper mother, a proper father, the best he was. I'd had a good family, then I did anyway. But Mike Tyson never had that. And I seen all these people around him, being around him, for what they could get out of Mike Tyson. They didn't feel anything for him, they didn't like him, they didn't do nothing. All he wanted was money. And I seen a superhuman being self-destruct under bad advice and bad guidance and money hungry, money grabbing cockroaches. And I thought to myself, when Tyson was born, there's only one name fitting for him. A man that's had it as hard as my son Tyson is Mike Tyson. I named him after him because of what he'd been through. I watched this Robin Givens. I could see what she was right off the off and I went like that when I was I was a I was a 23-year-old and I was like that. Mike, don't have that woman round you. She's a gold digger. You know what? Then being in America, you might as well have been in another planet. The world now has become a goldfish pole. But then it wasn't. And I watched this man, a superhuman being, unravelling. And I thought, it's the biggest shame and the biggest pity in the world. But from Mike Tyson's downfall, I learnt a lot. And I thought, you know what? That ain't happening to me. And at the time I was boxing myself, I was getting abused myself. But I learnt from what was happening to Mike Tyson. I thought, what's happening to him is happening to me back here. So I knocked it on the head. And I, th- I practised what I preached. I thought, none of my sons are suffering that. If they ever be boxers, and I'm from a lineage of fighting people, 300 years ago, they've been fighting, both sides of family. So I think to myself, you know what? When Tyson come along, I was determined not to let my son get abused like that. And I put, I read my sons with brains and they can think for themselves. And Tyson is like an encyclopedia. He's a cleverest human being you'll ever see, you know. And I used to say to him, watch these people. People who you think your friends aren't your friends. They're out for one thing, what they can get out of you. So keep them at arm's length, do your thing. Don't judge anyone unless you know them personally. And that's something I'll never do. I wouldn't judge anyone unless I knew him for 30 years. Like I know you now for 10 minutes. I would not want to judge you. You could sit there and I could say, I know nothing about Uma. I don't know nothing about him. So I can't judge you. So what I'll do, I'll take you on face value. I'll take you how you are with me at that present time. And I'll give you a good report. I'll say, you know what? Every time I've seen the man, he's been all right with me. You know, so I can only pass comment what I've seen while he's been in my company. And that's what other people should do. But hear this, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. There's millions out there. Especially in boxing. In boxing. They're all like that. But they won't get it over John Fury. They won't get it over this kid. Because you, you, have you ever seen the film Braveheart? Braveheart, yes, yes, Mel Gibson. Yeah. Do you remember the old man in the loft? Yes. Or the leper? Yeah. I'm him. Robert De Bruce, his dad, he was dying with leprosy. Nobody ever seen him. He was locked away in an attic. I'm that man. And I'm in that attic looking at everything. And when, when they come back to me and I see someone, they do something. I'm in my attic and I'm dissecting everything because I've got nothing better to do. I live alone most times, you know, there's only me, most days a week, most hours of the day, I'm on my own. I've got nothing better to do than look out for my kids. And that's what I'm going to do till my day's end. Because I want nothing out of life. I've had the best of it. But what I haven't had is this much. My kids get getting fair play. And I will die before I let anybody take a liberty of my children. And let me tell you something, I've said some things... People don't agree with them, but I've turned out to be right, and I've made a lot of experts have a lot of egg on the face. Not just now, in the past as well. And I just hope people believe that. You know what Saturday reminded me of uh, a little bit was when Tyson used to fight on terrestrial television. Um, obviously a much more refined version, much more developed version we saw on Saturday night, but mm. that pure aggression that we saw from him on Saturday <laughs> night, we used to see back in the day on ITV uh, in his early days. Did that trigger something in your mind as well? Yes, because that, that early aggression, that gung-ho way of boxing, put Tyson on the map. 
And then he spent a brief few years back boxing on the back foot and doing this, that and the other. But that's learning his craft. That all added to making a good pie. You know, all of that to happen. Boxing on the back foot, very clever move. But you've got to be able to adjust to every opponent. And Tyson can do it all because he learnt it. My brother Peter, he learnt him all that back stuff moving, the trickiness, the achy jerking come from one man. Peter. And um, that methodical bullying forward way in his early career and getting the job done and putting backsides on seats with my first brother, my late brother Hugh. He instigated all that, so he went from Huey to Peter. And when you combined all that together, you come out with a fighting machine that he is today. You know, they say to me, oh, you've trained him this, you've trained him that. The only training I ever did with my, my son was hitting these pads on that seat where you are, us kids, you know, because actually they never believed in me. They never believed in me because oh, the dad thing, father and son, yeah, they've heard me rant on all my life and they took me for granted and this, that and the other. And probably thought, my dad don't know what he's talking about. But I let it all happen because it had to happen. I thought, you know what? Let them do what they've got to do. They can only learn from it. But in these later years now, even though they might not admit it, somewhere in the brain they'll say, you know what? My dad wasn't that big of a fool. He knows what he's talking about. You know, and I say, listen... I can plant a seed, because if I say to my sons now, don't do this and don't do that, they won't do it. But what they do do is go away and think about it and think, you know what, there's a possibility, a slim chance my dad could be right. You know, and that's come out in the open now. And they do listen to me a little bit. You know, and I could only advise Tyson to do the best he can in life. And if I couldn't advise my son for his good, I'd never, advise him. I'd never advise him for his bad. And I would say to myself, if I'm wrong in the advice I give to my children, I'll walk through St Anne's Square with no trousers on. Because I wouldn't do it. I will die for my children, my greatest invention. Nothing else matters. You know, nothing else matters in the world to me but my sons. All six of them. And all six of them are fine, upstanding men. What I've created. There's no ifs and buts, they're all men. And I'm proud of them. Whatever they do, whatever they don't do. They can stand on their own two feet, they don't need me, and that's the way I have programmed them as kids. They might have thought, you know what, my dad was an old this, that and the other. He never give us this, he never give us that. He was hard on us. He kicked us up the backside, he slapped us round the head. But look what kind of men they are today. They can stand the ground with anybody. They can look anybody in the eye and say, I'm a fury, a proper fury. And they've done it all themselves, like Tyson. He's a superman, isn't he? Absolutely. A superman. But it's, it's my legacy. It's what I've created. How I treat them and reared them as babies, it's resulted in what kind of job they've done today. You know, they're well-mannered. They've not got a criminal record. You know, they've done everything right. I've been a bad boy in my life. Paid the ultimate price. I'm not hiding nothing. Because people know. When, when you're not yourself, quick people can pick up on it in a second. They can say, see him, he's a fraud. I don't hide nothing. I was a bad boy through pure ignorance. Because I didn't know any other. No education, no schooling, no friends. Nobody could count on. I just went through life, bullheaded. Never took a backward step. And I hit a few brick walls along the way. I crashed a few times. But listen... That all put me in good stead to rear a family and rear boys not to crash. Not to walk into things bulleted. And I say to everybody, every man, woman, child out there, before you act, think and think again. Because it'll pay dividends. Never make hasty decisions. Because they always come to no good. Give things plenty of thought. Especially when it comes to your children. Because what you instill in them as children, they are what they are as men. And for what time I got left above ground is neither in or there in the eyes of God. But what I've done, I think I've been a good dad. Well, I don't think I know because I wasn't one of my boys that paid me any attention at all because they can only say one thing about me. Yeah, my dad was an hard man, but I tell you what, he was always there for us. 
you know, and they thought I might have been being cruel to them. But you've heard the saying, haven't you? You've got to be cruel to be kind. And that's what I've been to my kids. Cruel to be kind. No more, no less. John, I want to ask you, how many heavyweights in history could have done that to Deontay Wilder, what your son did in a rematch? One of the hardest punching heavyweights ever, if not the hardest punching heavyweight ever. If you didn't know how to deal with Deontay Wilder, he'd probably kill you. He's one dangerous man. And let me say this much about Deontay Wilder. I wanted to get on the, the internet, TV, any other network, and say I told you so. But what I'm going to say about you, Deontay Wilder, and I know you're going to be watching this at some point, you defended your belt with heart, honour, and you're a credit to your American nation, because you took some stick, my boy. You did. And congratulations to you. You fought like a warrior. And I do believe you were the best Deontay Wilder I've seen. I said to David A., John Rawl, and Steve Bunce, Paul Malinagi, you can't improve. Deontay, I'm wrong. You improved. But my son beat the best Deontay Wilder. And Deontay, stop blaming your suit, mate. Don't discredit what you've done by making excuses. Because you don't need to, my friend. You've done enough in that fight to prove to the world you was a worthy WBC champion. You've gone up a lot in my book, Deontay. Good luck, mate. Enjoy your family. Most people in boxing are suggesting that towel should have been thrown in perhaps earlier, John. What was your reaction when it came in? Did it come in too late? Let me tell you one thing. This is to Deontay Wilder and nobody else. Deontay, keep Mark Breland round you. Mark Breland saved your life because you was in no fit state and sometimes fighters have to be saved from themselves. And Mark Breland saved you. Listen to Mark Breland. He's been a world champion, a good world champion. He was a crunk fighter. Believe in Mark Breland. Forget about everybody else because they will get you killed. Mark Breland was saving you for another day. If you'd have gone another two or three rounds, it might be the end of your career. So think and think again. Do not get rid of Mark Breland. He's your best asset. And he's been a good champion. He's a good man. Good man, Mark Breland. Good call. A lot of people have put their concerns out. The fact that Mark Breland's position is under review as assistant coach. And uh, Deontay is considering getting rid of him. Is he mad? I'm telling you, mate. I know boxing inside and out. And it was... It was let me tell you something. It was me and people around me We'll put the plan together. But if you get rid of Mark Breland, you'll never make any more successful fights in your life. Keep Mark Breland. Jay Diaz, a lovely fella, and all this, that, and the other. But he wear, he, his uh, art rules his head, and that's not what you want in boxing. Mark Breland, save you for another day. Jay Diaz, you'd have fought on. You probably would not add another day left in you because you'd been in hospital for a long time and your career would have been over. So start thinking for yourself, Deontay. Mark Brillen's your man. Keep hold of him. You've touched upon the costume comment. Do you want to just elaborate on it more? The costume was stupid. If that would have been Tyson wearing that, I'd have said, behave yourself, will you? It's a boxing match. That don't intimidate real fighting men. You could come out of your dressing room, Deontay, with six swords in your hand. Daggers everywhere, two guns all down your trousers. We would not be afraid of you. So that intimidation thing then worked. It went against you. It went against you. But let me say this much about your outfit, yeah? If you're saying it was too heavy and this, that and the other, it weighed 45 pound. It doesn't say much for your strength and conditioner, does it? He wants to come in under review. Under review. Never mind uh, 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 Mark Breland. Don't make excuses, Deontay. It's ridiculous. You did enough, mate, in, your, in that fight to be proud of yourself. You was the best you ever was. You never stopped throwing punches. You never stopped trying to win. But you just met a bigger, stronger, more determined Tyson Fury who's going to be an all-time great. You've nothing to be ashamed of, Deontay. Don't make excuses, mate. Because if I thought you was a, a lemon, I'd say you was a lemon. I met you in Ireland. I'm not scared of you, mate. I was never scared of you. I'm 50-odd year old and I got stuck in you in a second. But let me tell you something. You fought your heart out, mate, and you're a credit to the boxing nation and your family. You done your country proud. Stop making excuses, though. It's, it's undermining what you've done. Last comment from Deontay. He says he wants to trigger that trilogy. Um, he's got really no other option for a world title. 
or a big payday. So can you blame him for that, even though it's so one-sided? No, I can't blame him for yeah. that. You know, it's all about the money, but I don't see what he's going to do with Tyson because Tyson's only getting better. But, uh, you know, get your team round you and start tell them to start using the brains. Forget Tyson. Forget the Tyson Furies of the world. He's too good for you. He's proved that. You couldn't beat him when he'd lost 10 stone. He got up from your best shots. That was enough to tell you that the rematch should never have been anyway. So what you want to do, go after AJ. Spread your wings. There's other people out there. Other people you can annihilate. But let me tell you something, mate. Tyson Fury, he's got every... He's too much brains, Tyson. He's only getting better. But tell your team to start using the brains and look far afield. There's plenty of other heavyweights out there you can make a few quid with. Get after Joshua and you'll probably get all the belts back off him. You know, there's plenty of other people out there. Concentrate on them. But if you mess with my son, there's only one place you're going. The hospital for a long time. So forget that one. A lot of people would like to see Joshua Wilder. It'd be a great fight. It'd be a great fight. But... Do you really think Joshua and Herm will take that fight considering Wilder's bringing nothing to the table? Wilder will always bring something to the in table. In terms of a belt? Never mind the belts. Deontay Wilder's an incredible fighter. He's got the knockout power. And let me tell you, any lesser man than Tyson Fury's not beating Deontay Wilder. Tyson's number one. Wilder's definitely number two. But that's what I'm saying. In terms of it's such a big risk to fight Deontay Wilder. Do you think Eddie and Joshua will take that fight considering there's no world title to gain from Deontay now? There's nothing really to gain from Wilder. It's such a dangerous fight. Well, I don't know what they're going to do. Eddie Ayn and uh, Frank Warren. BT Sport. Matchroom. Unless Eddie Ayn can come up with half a billion for the fight. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? Because that's what it's worth. Never mind what they say, what they don't say. Unless he's got half a billion to give. It's not going to happen, is it? Because my son ain't selling himself cheap no more. My son, let me tell you something. He's always been in the away corner. He's always supposed to lose. He's had 12 years of a nightmare. He's had every hard fight he is to fight. He's took fights nobody else would want to fight. He's beat champions, reigning five-year champions, ten-year champions, and he's gone to their own backyard to do it. Hear this, you have to get some serious money out now. Some serious money. Because my son's worth all the money in the world. And if you're talking what you're talking, the fight will never happen. So dig deep. Oh, you've got some very deep pockets. Because it's not going to happen. Half a billion for the two fighters. That's what I'd be asking for that fight. Split down the middle? Split down the middle. Let them get on with it. There's two sides to this. Biggest debate. fight in the world. Absolutely, yeah. And by the way, another thing. They're saying Saudi Arabia, this, that, and the other. Bahrain's been mentioned. Bahrain. Pull your money up. We've got all the belts. Let's keep the fight in this country. Whatever the Bahrainians, the Iranians, or anybody else in the world, pull up, match it, and so and keep the fight here. Because that's what it should be. If he fights Joshua, which I doubt he will, because Joshua's hiding something anyway. He couldn't beat Andrew Ruiz. And he's terrified of him. Tyson will absolutely put him in Royal Infirmary. I'd be fearing for Joshua's life. But if it did happen, let's have it here. Instead of letting the fight go to foreign countries. They're both Brits. All the belts are here now. Let's enjoy them. Let's give the British public the best fighting the best here. But that is going to have to be paid for. They've got plenty of money, Britain. They're the richest country in the world. Don't worry about that. They can afford it. John, your son has completed boxing. He's won every possible belt yes. there is to win. Yep. Um, so therefore, there's an argument he should just pack the fighting game in. However, that was his career best performance on Saturday night, and I think he's only going to get better. So obviously, there's an argument from that point of view to keep going. What do you think he should do? What it is from my point of view is, what more can he do? That's what I'm saying. He's won every belt. He's so. won everything. I'll run through it quickly with you. English champion twice. British champion, Irish champion, Commonwealth champion, European champion, intercontinental champions, IBO, WBO, intercontinental belts, IBF champion, WBO champion, WBA champion, WBC champion, Ring Magazine champion, twice. lineal champion. What more can he do? He can't, that's what I'm saying. He won so. gold medals for his country as an amateur. ABA champion, 
The only thing he never got was the Olympic gold medal because he wasn't allowed to go. He didn't get picked. He'd have got that as well. So, what more can he do? But it's the powers that be. He's contracted and they will milk it. But if for my money, retire now. Well, you know what he's got more than anybody else? He's undefeated. Lennox Lewis, he retired but he'd been beaten. Muhammad Ali was beaten. Larry Holmes was beaten. Everybody was beaten. Foreman, Mike Tyson. Foreman, all the greats yeah. had been beat. Tyson is the unbeaten, multi-world champion. And he stays there. He stands alone in this field as the biggest sporting icon to come out of the UK. And the best boxer to ever come out of the UK is him, Tyson Fury. My son, I am the proudest man alive. And if you want to question me, let's have a bit of a battle royale. I don't, well, think, many, don't think many people will be taking you on that, uh, You'd be surprised at 54-year-old, but listen, I give, <laughs> I've got the best three minutes in me you'd ever see in your life. My boxer tricks, mate. I can definitely do my job outside. I wasn't much in the ring because I couldn't use what I had. But outside, I'm a demon still. Don't worry about that. John, I want to quickly ask you about the uh, Nigeria gum shield that Tyson had. I never noticed it, to be honest no. with you. Have you seen the picture? I've seen the picture. Don't know what that's about. No idea. Message to Joshua? Had he forgot his gum shield or something, Tyson? It was a quick replacement. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? There's no message to Joshua. Joshua's a... Listen. AJ, this is to you. I'm saying nothing wrong about you as a person. You're a lovely young man. You've done a lot for your country. You've got the belts. But I'm only talking in boxing terms, in fighting terms. And I don't think... You're a true fighting man. Bob Arum said the same thing. I was thinking it long before Bob Arum said it. You're a nice guy. You look well. You've got a big future. But when it comes down to the beating, fighting, lion art, I don't think you've got it. So don't mess with Tyson Fury. Keep your belts. Go and fight other people. But don't mess with Tyson unless it's worth your while. Because it'll be the last belt you ever put. It'll be the last time you'll ever box if you mess with him. Because he'll wreck you. 19 stone. Six foot nine, wrecking machine, will not stop coming forward. But he'll come forward at you educatedly and he'll punish you, he'll school you and he'll break your heart. And he'll make your life a misery and your life will never be the same again. So think on, Eddie and that's to you and all. I've never spoke to Eddie in person. But let me tell you, Eddie, what are you doing, mate? And I know you do, it's all business to you, it's all about money, but let me tell you something. Tyson Fury will seriously hurt any heavyweight what stands in front of him as we speak, and he's only going to get better. But let me tell you something. I don't think you can afford him. So, correct me if I'm wrong. All that silly chat about your little bits of peanuts and that. It's a lot of money to me, because I ain't got five pound in my pocket. My son has to buy the dinners everywhere I go to. And I say to my son, he said to me, Dad, I'll buy you a car. I don't want a car. I've got a 30-year-old Mercedes car, an old diesel thing. You know, I run it on chip fat and cooking oil. That's me, John Fury. Don't ask nothing of nobody. But let me tell you something. Tyson will ruin your life. He'll ruin Eddie Ayn's life. Eddie Ayn can't sleep at night. Do you know that, Uma? I don't know that, John. Do you want to enlighten me? Because I'll tell you something. The jealousy is bubbling out of him. You know, and I say this much. If anybody in the world wanted Tyson Fury to lose that night, it would have been the Ayn camp. And I know that. But let me tell you something, Eddie Ayn. And all your entourage and all your fights and this, that and the other. You can't beat my son. You've got nothing to beat him. The man hasn't been born yet or bred yet can beat Tyson Fury. And I'll take any money. I'll take all bets. When you're facing my son Tyson Fury. Like I said to David A. Like I said to all of them. And I'll say the same to you. I'll put my money where my mouth is. Your man can't beat my son. And I'll give odds. I'll give you two to one. How's that? So put that in your pipe and smoke it. And I'll tell you what, you know, if, there's no, if you ain't going to pull up the right money, don't mention my son. Don't mention the Gypsy King, because you can't talk about kings. You wouldn't talk about the King of England, you wouldn't talk about the Queen of England. So don't talk about my son, the Gypsy King, unless you've got a lot of money and you're prepared to put it forward. Keep AJ, keep working away. Fight Usk, Usek, whatever they call him. Fight this other man, Pulef, that's his level. But keep away from the Gypsy King. He's on a different level. You know that and I know that. Does Tyson stop Joshua quicker than Wilder? Does Tyson stop Joshua quicker than Wilder? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. No problem at all. Because 
he wouldn't engage with Andy Ruiz. Five foot ten. Well, no, no, I wouldn't say he's five ten. He'd be no more than six foot. No, I think he's five ten, John. Is he five he's ten? Five ten, yeah. And he's frightened to engage with him. He wouldn't engage with him. And he said about Tyson, oh, when he fought Klitschko, he run away all night. They had to steal my son's tactics to get through the fight with Andy Ruiz. He wouldn't even trade with Ruiz. And Ruiz ain't Tyson. There's nowhere for him to go in that ring when Tyson gets in front of him, smashing that big jab in his face, hitting him to the body, roughing him up. Then it comes down to men and how big your balls are. And Tyson has got balls like two King Kongs and Godzilla rolled into one. So if you ain't got them to match, mate, don't mention my son's name. Enough said on that. Get the money. Half a billion. We'll talk about it. Until then, jog on. How proud of you of this man behind me is Tommy Fury, uh, who's uh, looking to crack on with his own career. Yeah, very proud. Like I'm the old sons. He's, he's going to be a good young man if he listens. He doesn't get carried away. He doesn't let domestics ruin his career. You know, he's, he's, he's a thinking lad. He's doing well. He got a big punch, he can box, and he's come out of my nutsack. So he's gonna be good, isn't he? And let me tell you something, I'm not just saying it, but I've never been proved wrong yet. And let me tell you something, anything I bred can fight. You don't have to be boxers. I've got six sons, everyone can fight. Everyone can fight. It's just him, he's in the ring. Tyson's in the ring, but all the rest can fight too. Don't worry about that. I've heard about Huey. They can all fight, yeah. mate. My sons can all fight. They're as good as any man. And stand up young men. And I'm proud of every one of them. From the oldest to the youngest. John, I think we've got to mention quickly Andy Lee and Sugar Hill and the job they did. Absolutely. Well, it's poetry, isn't it, in motion. Andy Lee, cousin, relative, two, grand two grandmothers, grandchildren, together, Sugar Hill, Cronk, Manuel Stewart, you know, number one, great for Sugar Hill. He made Emmanuel's dream come true and legacy and foretold events come true. So that's the mission. But I want to give Sugar Hill credit on his own. You know, Emmanuel Stewart did what he did, did a fine job, had more world champions than anybody else. But let's give a little bit of credit to Sugar Hill. He's up to do the job. Emmanuel's not here no more, God rest his soul, may God give him a good bed in heaven. But Sugar Hill's here, he's brought Tyson through. In a short time, in just six weeks, I've seen a tremendous difference in Tyson's ability. So Sugar Hill needs a lot of credit. Andy Lee, a lot of credit. He gave Tyson motivation, knowledge, he'd been a world champion himself. It's a team made in heaven, and he needs to stick with his team for the rest of his career. Thank you, Andy Lee. Thank you, Sugar Hill. Poetry in motion. Credit to you all. Can I just say everybody else? Yes, definitely. The cook, George Lockhart. Yeah. Well done, mate. Don't mind eating that food. It looked very good. I'd be a better man if I ate that. Um, Christian. Essence Christian. Yeah. His strength and conditioning has been there from word one since the comeback, since I come out of prison. Christian was there. Well done, mate. Credit to you. Uh, um... He's massage Matt, fella, Matt. Matt. Yeah. Incredible job, mate. He kept the aches and pains away from him. That team is the best team Tyson's ever had in his life. He needs to stick with them. And let me say something else and all. Captain of that team. Oh, Tim. No, no. Tim done a good job. There's only one captain, and his name's Shane. Oh, Shane. My other son. Shane Fury was the captain there. He was the eyes, he was the ears, he was the man in charge of that full outfit. Because he knows about boxing just like I do. He's only a young man, he's 28 years old. But you know how you can trust them? Because they're brothers. And Shane will die for Tyson. Huey will die for Tyson. All his brothers will die for one another. And with Shane and Huey in charge, them two had his back from word one. They left here, they left their own business, they left their own families to be with their brother. Huey, Shane, John Boy went... For the first time. For the first time ever. Yeah. You know, and that showed to me that he had the right people around him. Tommy went, you know, and they all showed brotherly support, and that's what Tyson needed. He had people around him amongst millions who he could trust. And, you know, Shane, he captained the job well. Huey, 
second in command, only a young boy, pups done an experienced dog strayed and that's got him to the heavyweight championship of the world. So I'm over the moon because it was self-made by his brothers, Sugar Hill, Cousin Andy Lee, it all formed the perfect circle. And me on the outside looking in, I can only admire every man in that team. Tim Alcock, fabulous job. He's had a hard life as young Tim, but without Tim, things wouldn't get done. Things get done when Tim Alcock's around. Thank you, Tim. What do you think about the uh, president, Donald Trump, inviting your son to the White House? Donald? Donald Trump, the president. It's yeah. unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and the Pope inviting him to the Vatican. Has he really? Yes. Well, we're Catholic people. You know, the Pope's one thing. The Pope's out on his own. You know, but let me go back to Donald Trump. I'm a big admirer of Donald Trump. I like Donald Trump. Great man. Great leader. Proper man. An experienced man in life, as well as in politics. He's been involved in everything in his life as Donald. And for him to say to my son, come to the White House, I can only commend that man. And I hope he reigns president of the United States for the next 20 years. God bless you, Donald. Thank you. Oh, by the way, see if you can get me into your country, because I'm sick of waiting outside with my nose pressed up against the window pane and can't get in. See what we can do, Donald. I know you. Listen, I'm not asking him to change the world for me. I'm just a bum. I'm his dad. But listen, thank you for inviting my son to your house. Great stuff, mate. You're doing a good job in America as well. Good world leader. Your son and Deontay broke uh, a record. Uh, Did they? Highest grossing ticket event in heavyweight boxing history in Nevada. So any Las Vegas fights, that includes obviously the Mike Tyson fights, Holyfield fights, uh, they smashed it in terms of the ticket. I think it was like $18 million um, it generated through the ticket. So it's incredible. Well, let me tell you something. Everybody in this life needs a good dance partner. And Deontay Wilder played his part. Mm. You know, and without Deontay Wilder, things wouldn't have been possible. It was a good fight the first time. Intriguing. Suspense. On the second fight was a thriller. It was an edge of the seat stuff, you know, and I thought any given time Deontay Wilder can pull it out. Deontay Wilder is one of them you can you can you can sort of like compare him to a wounded tiger. A wounded animal can hurt you when it's dying. And that's Deontay Wilder. You might think you've got him, but all of a sudden he can flick and he can hurt you. Just like those Yankee roosters, Deontay. When you write them off and you think they're done, they can, they can flick, they can heal, and they can kill. You're that kind of person. You're a Yankee rooster, my friend. You're a hatchcock. <laughs> <laughs> and the Yankees know what I mean by that, and other people in the game know what I mean. He's a good man, Deontay Wilder. He'll always be dangerous, Deontay Wilder. And let me tell you something, if you're not special, and your balls ain't like King Kong, and you haven't got a brain, don't mess with Deontay Wilder. Mm. He's there at number two, and he's going to stay at number two in my book. Well, listen, uh, John Fury, thank you so much for your time, man. Nice one, Uma. I've talked you to death. No, I've enjoyed every second of it. Um, and uh, I'm talking because I've had eight pints of Guinness, and I've enjoyed them. I hope I haven't come across to the public as being an idiot, but I still speak from the heart, even though I've had eight pints. Thank you all, every one of you, who made the journey to Vegas to support my son. So many Brits went, yeah. Thank you to the British people. You showed love, support, and I can only commend every one of you. Thank you all, and have a nice life, and best luck to every one of you, including everybody who went. Even the ones that stayed at home and tuned in around the world on the television, thank you for paying your subscription fee and staying up till five in the morning. Thank you very, very much. Let's get on and make the world a better place by what's unfolded at the weekend. And you know what? I'll be a front runner for that. God bless you all, and thank you. John, God bless you. Bless all your family as well. Thank you, Uma. It's been a pleasure. Good to see you back behind the camera, mate. You're good at your job. You're here in my house. Good to see you. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been words. a pleasure. And uh, we look forward to seeing what happens next with Tyson. Wes, it's going to be. It's a good story. Let's just see. Cheers, John. Thank you. Take care, mate.